Hi, I'm the Sumerian Otaku, and today we're going to time loop back to 1917 and explore Namakura Gatana and whether or not it qualifies as the first anime. Trying to find out what the first anime is can be quite confusing. Some claim it to be the animation of that little sailor boy from around 1910 or so. Some even say that anime started as late as Astro Boy. But most tend to point at the year 1917 when Namakura Gatana was released. Just what is Namakura Gatana? Namakura Gatana is an animation created by Junichi Kochi from 1917, the year when Japanese animation officially began and as such is part of the first batch of studio produced animation in Japan. The title Namakura Gatana means blunt sword. The storyline is simple and, in my opinion, comic gold. It's the story of a demented samurai who purchases a cheap sword and decides to test its sharpness by attacking a blind old man walking with a cane. Now, Edo period sword buyers were known to test their sword's sharpness out on humans. However, they tended to test them out on the already executed bodies of convicted criminals, not random disabled old men walking around and enjoying the day. Despite this morbid setup, Namakura Gatana doesn't end in a geriatric pile of quivering gore. Instead, the wily old man kicks the samurai assailant who goes spinning off the screen. Then, the style of Namakura Gatana switches to imitate the look of a traditional Japanese shadow play as the samurai receives a further pummeling in the forest when he tries to attack a seemingly passive traveler. This time, the samurai loses his geta or sandal, which goes flying onto a tree limb. And yes, I thought it was a turtle the first time I saw it too. Then, the twice-thrashed samurai gets up shoeless and humiliated and contemplates his now comically bent sword. Then, he throws the sword away in disgust and walks away as the cartoon ends. Stylistically, this cartoon would make for a perfectly strong start as the first anime. And while the technology employed in making Namakura Gatana has a western feel, the animation doesn't at all. The highly stylized characters retain a definite Japanese feel to them that situates the animation entirely in the island nation of Japan. In addition, Kochi's choice to turn the last part of Namakura Gatana into an animated shadow play hints at the innovative stylistic experimentation that would become a staple of later anime. In fact, Revolutionary Girl Utena, which is one of the most innovative shoujo anime of all time, also switches to experimental shadow puppet segments in this way. Yep, Namakura Gatana would make for an awesome start to anime. But was it really the first Japanese animation? In short, no. But it is the first Japanese animation that we can still watch. Eh, that lasts for more than a few seconds anyway. And it's an Anna miracle that we can actually watch it today, since most early animation was destroyed in the Kanto earthquake of 1923. So, how did Japanese animation begin? Well, you might say it began with Japanese film, the medium upon which anime first thrived. You know, before they started doing almost everything with computers in the early 2000s. Prior to 1897, there was no film in Japan. In fact, a few years earlier, there were no films anywhere. In 1897, the pioneers of the film industry, the Lumiere brothers, sent their representatives to Japan to create a few short films. Because of this, we actually have cool video footage of a late 19th century kendo fight and a pre-auto industry Japanese village. The first Japanese movie theater popped up in 1903, and it was such a success that by 1916, there were at least 300 theaters mostly situated in Tokyo. Although some film continued to be produced natively in Japan, the majority of film shown in Japan in the early years was imported from the West. 
And that goes for the first animation as well. Arguably, the earliest cartoon is the French animator Emile Cole's Phantasmagory. Its popularity brought about cheaply produced animation reels hoping to make a buck. During this time, animations like Plank's A Good Drop, which were looping 50 frame animations, were produced cheaply and circulated through Japan. The earliest native Japanese animation came from around 1907. This was Katsudo Shashin, or Moving Picture, and it appears to have been created emulating this new style of animation. If you're interested in why Katsudo Shashin is and isn't considered the first anime, check out my Sumerian Otaku episode on Katsudo Shashin. I'll leave the link below. But back to the story of Namakura Gatana. By 1960, the Japanese film industry was firmly established. Anime had been introduced to Japan, and there was at least one short native Japanese animation already produced. In the West, cartoonists like J.R. Bray were beginning to overcome the difficulties of producing time-consuming animation and actually earning enough dough to make it worth the trouble. In Japan, the film company Tenkatsu wanted to do the same thing and employed manga artist Shimokawa Oten to begin creating animation to be shown in theaters around Tokyo. Unfortunately, none of Shimokawa's five or so films still exist, but his films do mark the beginning of the Japanese commercial animation industry. A sad beginning, really, when this is the only graphic we can show when we talk about the first Japanese animation. Shimokawa's first animated film is either Dekuba Shingacho Mein no Shipai, which was produced in early February 1917, or a mysterious animation produced in January earlier that same year, whose existence is dubious. Indeed, if we accept that Shimokawa kicked off anime, then anime began with a lost film we don't even know the title of that may or may not have existed. In any case, Shimokawa's Dekobo Shingachu is the first confirmed Japanese animation with a plot. Now this is all good and well, but just where does Koichi's Namakura Gatana fit in? Well, Shimokawa was feeling overwhelmed by the workload of creating animation day in and day out, to the point where he was actually going blind from looking into the bright lighting device necessary for creating the films. Indeed, animation back then was strangely bad for your health. Shimokawa's friend and fellow manga artist, Kuochi Junichi, was brought on board to help. However, before Shimokawa completely abandoned animation by the end of the same year, and who would blame him, he was going blind, his work had sparked new interest in the animation market, and before long, Koichi Junichi was lured from Tenkatsu's newly formed animation department to help form a rival studio, Kobayashi Shokai. Koichi, an experienced watercolor and manga artist, immediately began work on Namakura Gatana, the earliest plot-based animation that we can still watch. Koichi finished a blunt sword relatively quickly, it was released on the 30th of June, 1917, and shown in local theaters. It received positive write-ups, even by the people within the pure film movement, which generally rejected Japanese films they felt were too rooted in Japanese tradition. Unfortunately, the cost of production of Namakura Gatana and the other animation being produced was more than the returns, so the Kobayashi Shokai studio began to fall apart until it completely shut down in 1923. Koichi continued to animate and founded an anime studio of his own, Sumikazu Eiga, in 1923. Sumikazu Eiga stands out as the first Japanese film studio completely devoted to animation. Koichi remained an animator until 1930, when he switched back to manga permanently. Namakura Gatana is Silla's most famous work and is heralded by most to mark the beginning of anime. How was Kochi able to crank out a blunt sword so quickly? 
He knew that drawing every frame would be time-consuming, and decided instead to use paper cutouts. In a style of animation, which came to be known in Japan as Hirigami. It's something along the lines of the earlier episodes of South Park. First, he drew the characters, and then he cut out their moving parts. That way, instead of having to redraw the characters every frame, he could move them a little bit here and there and cut his workload exponentially. This is why the characters in Blunt Sword never turn around. They were flat pieces of paper after all, and not separate drawings that could be redrawn at different angles. That's not to say that the characters couldn't turn. As anyone watching Namakura Gatana will notice, the characters sometimes turn their heads, which required a new head to be drawn for every position, and swapped out with the prior head position every time the character's heads turn. In my opinion, Namakura Gatana marks one of the best uses of cutout animation ever. It just flows so smoothly, and the characters have more depth in their expressions than later attempts at cutout animation in Japan. So, let's get back to the subject of the first anime. Is Koichi's Namakura Gatana the first Japanese animation? Not really. Even if we discount Katsudo Shishin, the Sailor Boy animation from around 1907, we still have the five or so lost animations created by Shimokawa earlier that year, if you would hold that anime is nothing more than Japanese animation. Namakura Gatana cannot possibly be considered the first anime. However, if you believe that anime imparts a style unique to Japan, Kochi's Namakura Gatana is very much the first anime. Even though Shimokawa's work is older than Namakura Gatana and no longer available for analysis, Shimokawa himself tells us that he emulated the style of Emil Cole's Phantasmagory which, if you've ever seen it, is quite basic in design, to say the least. I've actually restored Phantasmagory, and I'll leave the link below if you're interested in watching it. Phantasmagory was made to look as if it had been drawn on a chalkboard, and Shimokawa even admits going so far as to drawing his early animation on a chalkboard, emulating it. For this reason, the first animations of 1917 likely look more like stick figures than what we think of as anime. However, Koichi's Namakura Gatana is vibrant. It has a definite style all its own which looks nothing like its western counterparts. There is depth to the character design. You can tell from the samurai's face that he is haughty and insane. You can tell from the merchant's face that he's crafty. And you can tell from the blind man's face that he's got something up his sleeve when the samurai goes to attack him. Indeed, Namakura Gatana feels like the first anime. And it's certainly the oldest anime we can still watch. So, what do you think the first anime is? Leave your comments below along with any ideas for future episodes of Sumerian Otaku. So far, I've been devoting episodes to laying out the origins of anime, but I'd be happy to geek out over anime from any time period. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more stuff like this. 